I work for Islamic Relief because I have a deep compassion for the mission that we do, both internationally and domestically. We want to be the best at what we do. It's the energy, it's the capacity, it's the compassion that these volunteers bring to the table and they dispense to the beneficiaries. What I do affects people every single day. And so I just can turn on the news and just see um, a child that may be um, in need or a woman, unfortunately, that was abused and it may be a little bit too late. And so I just say to myself that my work that I'm doing is not for myself. It's way bigger than me. It's way bigger than who I am as an individual. It's about helping others. And so that's pretty much what wakes me up in the morning. Islamic Relief isn't just centered around a certain group of people. It's out there to help anybody who is in need, no matter what faith, what religion, what, whatever they believe in. The most important things that we do for the community is to help them sustain their dignity and receive services. Every faith tradition in America has always had a strong charitable dimension. And Islamic Relief is an institution that the Muslim community should be proud of. We took our uh, core value from our faith, and our faith is always encouraging us to do the best. And uh, we, we deal with people without uh, waiting for them to pay us back or even to tell us thank you. For different people, Islamic Relief means different things. For the government, it's a four-star charity that has been receiving four stars for the last seven years. For our friends from the other faiths, uh, they look upon Islamic Relief as a very transparent, open, professional organization. For Muslims, this is the largest Muslim charity. I called Islamic Relief Bangladesh and I told him I want to see my orphan. And this is my donor ID, this is my orphan ID. He's five years old, he had his you know, oil in his hair greased up and his shorts rolled up and he saluted me. And we're three sisters, so when he saluted me, I was like, oh wow, like it's my little brother. And his mom makes 15 cents a day, basically. And she was like, Nazia, with the money you give me monthly, and not only feeds Rahid, but it feeds my daughters and me. We have a tin house, he gets medical checkups, he goes to school, and I was just like, me, like, with, like, uh, sacrificing a Starbucks is getting, you know, giving this kid a life. Islamic Relief has that rich and deep experience and the gravitas to contribute enormously to an international global vision. SIFA's mission is to support and increase the impact of faith communities and faith-inspired communities working on global poverty, relief, and development. Islamic Relief is um, a global neighbor. I feel blessed. I feel, feel great. I feel like I know that God cares about me. I'm still here, you know. Islamic Relief has many programs. In the United States, we have the Day of Dignity, we have social services, uh, we support youth programs, we support uh, free clinics. And internationally, we build the clinics, we build schools. We do water treatment and water and sanitation programs, agricultural programs, and other programs, especially in the health sectors. We provide medicine, we provide medical equipment, and so on. As many folks know, the United Nations and the member countries have adopted eight Millennium Development Goals to really eradicate, really address poverty and disease and disparity in the world in eight simple ways. At least five of them are areas where Islamic Relief had been working for many years. They are a professional, well-run, very capable organization with a tremendous knowledge of field realities of how to help the lives of the poor. We are trying to take the organization from good to great. We opened up the organization, uh, formed lots of partnerships, whether with the United States uh, government, with the Department of Agriculture and projects inside the United States, with the churches, uh, we have formalized the relation with the Mormon Church, a relation with the Lutheran Church, with the Catholic Relief Services, with the United Nations agencies. We build more relation, we build more partnership to maximize the benefits that will go to the beneficiaries on the ground. We're trying to aim for integrated development so that you could make a comprehensive impact on a community by addressing health needs, educational needs, and livelihoods needs, um, and then move out of that community. That's what success for us is, is, is being able to, um, to exit the project. 
and move on. At the heart of Islamic Relief's approach is a fundamental respect for the individuals with whom they work around the world. It is a recognition that people change their own lives, that it's a partnership with local communities that makes the fundamental difference in those lives of those communities. And it's the ability to work with individuals around the world in giving them hope and some sense of dignity as they try to change their lives. People don't understand what our work is. A water project isn't just providing water. If we can provide water, then the uh, women in the area can help with the little gardens and provide extra income to the family. Then they can build a school. And then the girls and the boys who were fetching water no longer have to fetch water, they have time to go to school. Water is life. Islamic Relief not only is active internationally, but is active here in the United States. So when Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf area, Islamic Relief was there. Islamic Relief was on the ground. They were there at a very early stage. When the earthquake hit in Haiti, Islamic Relief was there setting up one of the first camps in one of the cleanest and best run camps in Haiti. One of the singular moments that I've witnessed in my role here was the Haiti earthquake and seeing how the American people reached out uh, through institutions they trusted, like Islamic Relief, to help U.S. nonprofits operate uh, and partner with the U.N. and others in one of the world's largest reconstruction efforts. Another example of Islamic Relief's good work on helping to achieve the Millennium Development Goals is their work on eradicating malaria. I remember being at the Islamic Society of North America where Islamic Relief launched the Bite the Bug campaign. And it was just an extraordinary example of how to deeply engage congregations, how to deeply engage the youth. It felt alive and vital and they made it easy. They made it really easy to step into participation, but also they didn't disconnect it from its larger vision. I use it often to show as an example to other faith communities who are looking to mobilize their own congregations as what does a congregational outreach look like, especially when it's targeting the youth. And as an advocacy organization, we have this unique but powerful tool that's our voice. And so that's what we're doing. We're raising voices to end poverty. What that means is writing letters to Congress, picking up the phone and calling our senator. It's people using their voice. And, and that's why it's so critical for us to work with a group like Islamic Relief. Because, I mean, Islamic Relief is in the field, on the ground, changing lives in real ways. Our strategic direction right now is focusing on uh, disaster relief, on the integrated development, and also advocacy. We believe that the advocacy is extremely important, especially in the uh, third world countries. We're at our peak, we're at our stride, and we have over 3,000 volunteers, which is the largest volunteer base in any Muslim organization. We have the support from the government, we have the UN, we have amazing partnerships. Islamic Relief, because of their deep experience, is an important partner, an important voice in looking forward, looking where we've been, and looking where we want to go. Islamic Relief, as an organization, really has its finger on the pulse and understands in a very meaningful way what are the needs of the people it serves. So I think Islamic Relief is moving in the right direction, and I'm, I join others in applauding all of these initiatives that are unfolding. How do I feel? I feel I can sleep at night. The most amazing feeling is getting up in the morning and coming to a job that you want to do. The more we do this work, the more we see the need uh, for more people to become engaged. We need everyone's participation and everyone's passion all working together to find global solutions.